this price point, you will hardly find a watch with a better decoration. Hello, welcome to Swiss Watch King, welcome to another review. Today we go to Germany. We're going to review a watch you haven't probably heard of before because they make a small amount of watches per year. Today we're going to talk about Dornbuth & Son Model 99ZS. I'm always glad to review watches from Germany because the quality is usually top notch. And like I said many times before, the German watchmakers really do a great job and often compare and compete with the Swiss watch brands. The headquarters of the Dornblut & Zone are in Kalbe, Germany. It's in Saxony, which is in the Northeast region. In the beginning of 1959, Dieter Dornblut actually created his first pocket watch. And ever since he wanted to create his own brand with wristwatches. When he turned 60 in 1999, his son Dirk Dornblut, which at that time also became a watchmaker due to his father's passion and his own interest, he presented him his wristwatch. After Dirk presented his father the wristwatch, his father actually told him that since forever he had this idea of designing a wristwatch and making it into production. They sat down and started drawing you know, different visions and ideas on a few napkins. And in 99, the Dornblut 99 caliber was born. Shortly after that, the first watch was born. It featured a power reserve indicator and the first of their beautiful movements. The team today is around 9 people strong and is run by Dirk Dornblut. What I really want to emphasize today with this review is that this watch costs below 5,000 euros. You might find this expensive now, but once we dig into the movement and how much craftsmanship is actually put into this watch, I think you will uh, change your opinion really quickly. If you saw my video where I featured three watches under 5,000 Swiss francs, I would easily put this one in that category as well. It's an independent watch brand from a family owned company and the attention to detail is meticulous. The model I'm going to review today was lent to me by a good friend. And this is a limited edition of 10 pieces, which was made for the Vintage Time Forum in Germany. Let me now break down the dial for you and the different decorations you can see on the front side. As you see, the beautiful white dial is actually grained. It features lacquered indexes and the index 12 is in red. The red index actually pays homage to 1920s pocket watches and trends watches. They painted the number 12 red, so you can read the time more easily. Next to the indexes, going nicely around the dial, you can see that this watch features a railway mini track. Where you can see already craftsmanship in this watch is on the hands. They're made out of steel and are hand polished. You can also notice that the hands are blue. This is achieved by heating them. By heating the hands, which are steel, eventually they turn blue. So it's not uh, dipped into any color, but it's also, let's say, man-made. What's also very neatly made is the long, thin seconds hand. At the end of it, it's actually a bit bent, so it curves down on the dial a bit better and you can read the seconds more precisely. What I want to talk to you about the most is the movement of this watch. Again, you will see that it's going to impress you. When I turn the watch around, you'll be surprised to know that this is actually a Unitas movement. In fact, this model features a Unitas 6498 caliber. It might surprise you because this looks like an in-house movement, even to my eyes. You can see that the balance cock is actually hand engraved and it features a swan neck regulation system. The three-quarter main plate is very typical for German watchmaking and is actually hand grained. The inscriptions you can see about the limited edition and also the number of the watch and the company name here are all hand engraved as well and plated with yellow gold. The engraving here is done by a pantograph, but it still has to be done by hand. The crown wheels are also beautifully decorated with this double sunburst decoration. All the silver screws are mirror polished, and you can see that there are also blued screws on the movement. The blued screws are again flat polished and then heated blue. And the rubies are actually captured in gold chatons and fastened by these screws. Again, a feature a language and a watch would also have. This model is number 1 out of 10 and the movement is actually not fully finished yet. This is a prototype movement and believe me, if you see a fully finished movement of a Dornblut watch, you will have no complaints. Under the balance wheel there is also a perlage decoration and all the edges of the bridges are beautifully hand polished. 
The whole movement is red gold plated just to stand out a bit more and I love the contrast between the wheels, the screws and the movement. I'm also a big fan of the middle part of the movement which features this beautifully elevated bridge. The Unita 6498 movement is essentially a small seconds movement which has the seconds at 6 o'clock. But in order to make a central second, they had to modify the movement a bit and they created this beautiful 3D bridge which just you know, rises above the whole movement. What's also very neat for this price point is that this watch actually features hacking seconds. Hacking seconds again are you know stop seconds and once you push the crown out you can actually see that the balance wheel will stop. Stopping the balance wheel helps you set your watch more accurately. Again something usually high-end watches feature but I think in general most watches should have this. I'm sure you noticed by now that this watch doesn't feature an automatic winding rotor because it's a manual winding watch. It has a 50 hour power reserve and again I would advise you to you know wind it each morning or maybe at the end of the day just again to play with the watch a bit more. You can see that the case pack doesn't feature any inscriptions and is made out of stainless steel. And I really like that they used a bronze material for the case. It features a beautiful brush decoration on the side and actually this kind of bronze is called gunmetal bronze. It will age and change with time and get this you know patinated look which I really like as well. As you can see on the side the watch turned green a bit but if you want to reverse the bronze effect you just take like a towel and some lemon juice and the bronze will you know go back to almost its primary form. Like the case the buckle is also made out of bronze. The strap is I would say medium padded and is very comfortable. It's not too thin and also not too thick. As you see from the side the watch has a higher profile standing at around 11 millimeters. Turning the wrist around you can see how it fits my 18.1 centimeter wrist. Again the case size being 42 millimeters. I would wear this watch maybe like now on a you know nice green shirt or also on a suit but also because it has a bronze case you can wear it to you know a jeans and t-shirt. Don't be afraid to bring this watch to your next watch meetup as well because once you turn it around and show people the movement everybody will be surprised at how well this is made. If you want to spend a bit more money with the brand they also created an in-house movement in 2010 which you can see on their website. If you have any questions about this watch leave a comment down below. Also like and subscribe and share this video with somebody who you think might appreciate watches as much as you do. On the side you have a photo of a watch we'll feature next time. It's a very unique watch from a brand we haven't had on the show yet. If you know which one this is, and again this is a very hard one to guess, leave a comment down below and maybe you'll guess it right this time. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.